In this data exploration, I'll be looking at whether there is a relationship between the Nike fuel data and the PACE data. That's the question. Is there a relationship between Nike fuel and the PACE, which I ran? Nike fuel was a measure developed by Nike about a decade ago to try to compare exertion levels between different sports. It was a number based on estimated VO max, essentially. Uh, it's fallen into disfavor, and I don't think Nike uses it anymore, but I'm not certain about that. But it was supposed to allow you to determine whether you put in more effort into something than somebody else who is doing a different sport. It was supposed to allow cross-sport competition. And pace is how fast, with smaller numbers being faster. What I don't want to do is, again, bear in mind what I want. I want to know, is there a relationship between Nike Fuel and the pace? So what I do not want to do is to simply select all three columns like this. I do not want to do this because I will get, even if I switch to a scatter graph, I'll get something like this. And that's not what I'm looking to do. So you see at the bottom here I have the dates. The dates are just the day on which I did the run. I'm looking not for a relationship between the date and the data, but between the fuel and the pace. So when I'm doing that, I'm only going to look at the Nike fuel versus the pace data that you see here. And when you're looking for a relationship, one of the first things a statistician is going to do is go after a scatter graph such as this. Now I am working on a desktop. Uh, at, if I was on my phone, at this point I'd have to switch to using functions to tease out more meaning. But if you are, as I am here on a desktop, you can go over to Customize Series. Tell it to add a trend line. And that will begin to give you an idea. I'm going to go ahead and add an equation. That's a funny looking equation and I'll have to dissect that in a moment. But this in itself, this chart, begins to suggest that it's possible that there's a relationship. It's not much of a relationship. Now, before I leave the chart, I do want to talk about one other thing. And that is, we, there's a usually a rule that we should always leave zero on a chart. But in the world of statistics, we often toss it out because there's a whole section of this chart in here, around the uh, bottom part, that's just empty. So sometimes, we will go to customize vertical axis and go ahead and shift. My smallest number is something like seven seven something. So I can actually go in here and tell it I want the minimum to be seven. It stretches out the vertical axis. Sometimes a pattern is somewhat hidden until you stretch out an axis. And this is one of those times. Stretching out the axis helps you see the pattern helps you see the slope. So that's something to think about doing whenever you get data bunched together horizontally high on a chart. Change your y-intercept. You should probably warn your readers that you are not y, your y-intercept is no longer zero. This is sometimes used in the news industry to exaggerate the difference between values in a chart and people misinterpret the chart as a result. But in this case we want to do this so we can better use the area of the graph to depict the data. I still don't have a really good idea if there's a relationship here. I've also got this weird E thing going here, so what's going on? Well, the next thing to do is to go after this slope. Uh, uh, most statisticians would think the next thing to do would be to go after this slope. And again, it's a Y comedy X. Notice I'm ignoring the date. I don't care about the date. I'm looking for a relationship between the fuel and the... And there's where that E comes from. That E is exponential notation in the world of spreadsheets. And so that E tells me it's 10 to the negative fourth. This is scientific notation spreadsheet style. The E means that the exponent on a power of 10 is negative 4. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 decimals over. So it's a very small slope. Maybe it's, you know, if a slope is zero, there's no relationship. The intercept, that's not going to be that important in this case. I'll go ahead and calculate it, but I don't think it has any particular meaning in this particular example because it's simply the value you would get when you get to uh, 
a zero Nike fuel. I don't know what that would mean anyway in their system, and it's probably beyond the data and not very important. But because it says for zero Nike fuel, you still get a pace. That probably has no particular meaning. Now. Leave that aside. But I do want to look at the correlation R because that's going to begin to tell me whether or not this data has any particular significance or meaning. Again, I've gone in reverse order. Press enter. 0.46. That's not low. That's not weak. That is moderate. Is, so I can say the strength here is moderate. I have a moderate, a moderate correlation. It's moderate. It's also a positive correlation. The nature of the uh, relationship is that it is positive. So that's of some interest also. So it's a positive, moderate relationship. This will probably hold up as being significant. Now we haven't looked at significance in lines. You can do it, but it's there's some formulas you have to master to, to get to it. That is, get a p-value for a slope. But this looks very promising, quite frankly. This looks like it might indeed be a significant uh, relationship. By significant, in this case, we mean that the slope is not zero. The null hypothesis in linear regressions is that the slope is zero. If the slope is zero, there's no relationship. And this looks darn small, but the reality is it's a moderate. It's moderate. Uh, and you can see the R squared here, which is telling you that there is some coupling between the two. Uh, so the correlation is moderate. And that, that means there is a relationship. Pace does affect your Nike Fuel score. Not just your distance. Um, now distances are different for each of these runs. But your Nike Fuel score is influenced in part by the pace. Whatever the algorithm is, the math, it includes that. A point to this was lesson was twofold. One, be careful to only work with the data you're trying to find the relationship between. There may be spurious information that's not going to help you figure out whether there's a relationship. In this case, the date is spurious. Spurious means uh, incidental, accident. It, it doesn't matter. It, sometimes it's used in the sense of it being false, not true. Well, this is true, but it's not meaningful to what I'm trying to do. I want to know if there's a relationship between IQ like, fuel here and pace here. To figure that out, I'm going to need to do the relationship between those two variables, and the date just doesn't matter. That's the first part uh, of today's lesson to learn. And the second part is, sometimes you should play with the axis uh, in a case like this to tease out better what it looks like. If all the points are crowded together, tease it apart. It may be a problem of a difference of scale between the two. These values are close to each other, and they're kind of far in a sense from zero, and so they they don't it doesn't show up well until you change the minimum and maximum, and you can do that. So as you explore, or as I like to think of it, as you play with the data, learn to play with the tool that you're using as well.